Welcome to this heat transfer video lecture. We're going to talk more about internal convection. Specifically, we'll be talking about internal convection and its relationship to the overall heat transfer coefficient, U. We have talked about the overall heat transfer coefficient before when we were talking about conduction and thermal resistances. So U is a nice way of incorporating both the convective and the conductive effects when you have heat transfer happening through multiple uh, media in series. So this is very relevant for convection and for heat exchangers. So let's talk about that, how that might work. So prior to this, we've talked about having flow through a tube or a channel where you might have a constant surface temperature, Ts. So where we might need to worry about the overall heat transfer coefficient um, is if we had another fluid out here. So we might have an outer fluid and an inner fluid. So when we've talked about uh, internal convection, we've been talking about heat transfer from this internal fluid at Tm to the inner surface. But often we'll have a fluid on the outside, so we'll have heat transfer by convection. So here we'd have external convection happening from this outer fluid to the outer pipe, then we'd have to have conduction through that pipe wall and then convection inside. So U gives us a really convenient way of doing that and this is going to be very relevant as I said for heat exchangers. So here is a diagram so you might have inner flow coming through that tube and then you might have outer flow. So this would be external convection, this would be flow around a tube in cross flow or flow around a cylinder in cross flow. So in chapter 7 we learned how to come up with heat transfer coefficients for that scenario. We would have a separate and different heat transfer coefficient for this inner flow and that would be given from the theory that we've been de developing here in chapter 8. So if, if we're really wanting to know how energy gets from this outside fluid to the outer pipe wall all the way through the pipe wall and then to the inner fluid, well then we're going to have to consider all, all three um, well, heat transfer through all three of those media in series. So that's going to lead us to express Q in terms of the overall heat transfer coefficient. This is the same equation we developed in our previous video lecture except that we have replaced H with U here. So it's U, the overall heat transfer coefficient, times the total surface area of our pipe times the log mean temperature difference. And we can also express our temperature profile in that way. So this particular equation gives us the outlet temperature. So if we were to solve this for the outlet temperature, you can see that you can express outlet temperature in terms of U, but also in terms of T infinity rather than just the surface temperature with again this external temperature being the T infinity that shows up in that equation. So Looking at this from a cross-section point of view, we would have a thermal circuit. And that thermal circuit would need to go from here to infinity. We would have this external convection thermal resistance. We would then have a conduction thermal resistance. And then we would have this internal convection thermal resistance to get us to Tm. However, um, we're not going to use a simple temperature difference, we're going to use the log mean temperature difference between the two. So our so the way we would go about doing that is by using the thermal resistance method. So first of all we would start by calculating our R total. So our total thermal resistance is going to be equal to the exterior, exterior convection thermal resistance plus the conductive thermal resistance through the pipe wall plus the internal convective resistance. And we could express those more clearly by doing 1 over h bar out times the outer surface area of the pipe. The conductive thermal resistance takes on this form as we learned in chapter 3 the natural log of the outer radius of the pipe divided by the inner radius of the pipe over 2 pi L K. And then finally we would get the interior thermal resistance which would be given by H in over the inner area. So these H's, we would get this H by applying a convection relation for external convection. 
and we would get this relationship by applying the appropriate relation for internal convection. So another way of expressing this, if you recall that R, so we could express the total rate of heat transfer. So Q would be, um, it would be our log mean temperature difference divided by R total. But we could also express this in terms of UA is equal to, or sorry, UA times delta T log mean. So we would take the log mean temperature difference as given um, using T infinity here. So using T infinity in the definition of the log mean temperature difference also. And this taking this relationship gives us that uh, UA is equal to 1 over R total. So using the relationship up here, we would get that UA, and this is the product, I shouldn't have written that so small. This is the product U, the overall heat transfer coefficient, multiplied by the area. So in this particular case, we would have UA is equal to the inverse of this quantity up here. So UA would be 1 over H on the outside. Our area on the inside, or on the outside, would be 2 pi outside radius times L. We have our conductive thermal resistance through the pipe. And we have our convective thermal resistance on the inside, which would be H in times 2 pi Ri times L. And then we would take the inverse of that to give us this UA product. So one thing that is important to note is that uh, UA, so A means the area. So the definition of U will actually change depending on which area we're talking about. Are we talking about the inner surface area of the cylinder or the outer surface area of the cylinder? And it's sort of arbitrary, you just pick. So here we get UA is equal to U inner times the inner area, or it's also equal to U outer times the outer area. So when you're determining U, you would, and you had thick pipe walls, you would just want to specify whether your U is defined based on the inner surface area or the outer surface area. And again, the product of all these three quantities are equal to each other. So if you wanted to break it down to just U, that just matters, depends on if you're talking about the smaller inner area or the bigger outer area. There is another scenario. So if you have a thin walled pipe, So if you have a thin-walled pipe, um, then you would basically say that the difference between the inner area and the outer area are negligible. And so the U would be the same in either case. And then again, that's only making the assumption that you have a thin-walled pipe. If you do make the assumption that you have a thin-walled pipe, then you are also neglecting the thermal resistance of the pipe wall itself. You're assuming that that's so small that you can just leave it out. So if that's the case, then you can leave out the um, leave out the thermal resistance of the pipe itself and write your U just based on the external convection coefficient and the internal convection coefficient. Noting that we have just divided each quantity through by area, which would be the same. And again, this is only the case when you have a thin walled pipe. It's, it's also important to note, it helps with intuition to know that your U, it's always going to be smaller than H in, and it's always going to be smaller than H out. So because U incorporates all thermal resistances and all thermal resistances are additive when they're in series. So the biggest U could possibly be would, would be the, the smaller of the two, either H in or H out. Basically by considering those other thermal resistances, you're uh, definitely gonna make your overall rate of heat transfer smaller.